Howdy everybody. I got one of these little portable folding solar panels behind me. And if you go to like most any campground, uh, you'll see these, they're quite popular. Uh, if you need a little more solar output to keep your batteries charged, or perhaps you just got like a very basic setup. You don't want to go through the whole process of like permanently mounting panels on your roof, your camper, or your trailer. These are a great option. Personally, I prefer like permanently mounted panels on my roof, on my van. You know, I can just forget about them, but I definitely understand why people use these. But a curiosity I've had for quite a while now is uh, can you run them inside your windshield? And today we're basically going to go over um, and kind of try to answer that question of what kind of performance you can expect if you put one of these inside your windshield. Now, if you're already asking why, um, that's not too surprising. I've actually wanted to answer this question for myself for quite a while. And a company reached out to me, gave me a couple of solar panels for free to basically do this. And I thought this is a good time as ever. So the original reason why is though, if you go to like any trailhead or even just like any parking lot where you can't just put these things out, you know, first they won't get stolen. And second, you know, they're not gonna get like driven over or walked over by other people. So this would be a great option if you're gonna leave your car somewhere for a few days, you wanna keep your batteries charged up. Um, but how much performance can you expect? And to kind of add to that, the original van my girlfriend and I ever had was actually a 2002 Freightliner van. And for like nine years, um, all it had was like a 100 watt solar panel on the roof. We never cleaned it. Um, it had a 100 amp hour battery. And that was enough for like our lights and our USB charging, as well as like one of those uh, cooler style Dometic fridges in the summer and a Propex heater in the winter. So that's a very basic setup. And you know, that dirty solar panel, 60 watt output probably maybe 70 watt at times but you know that's not very much output to keep a battery system alive that setup had no alternator charging so i really think that if you've got a very simple setup you may not need as much solar as um as maybe is advertised or as like often we're led to believe because everything you're just told you need so much overkill so i just wanted to know if you put one of these in a windshield what does it do so i've been collecting data from this for about a week and let's compare it to how it performs compared to the one on the ground. First off, the panels that I use for these come from All Powers. Uh, they gave these panels to me for free. The specific ones I use are the SP029. The dimensions are just right about perfect for like a Mercedes Sprinter windshield. So that's why I went with these. I told them I wasn't willing to do a review video. I think those unboxing like product pushing videos, I don't really enjoy them, but I did tell them I'd use their panels in kind of an unusual way for a little experiment I've been wanting to run. So that's what we're gonna present today. I do say though, they seem to be very well built. They've got a little USB thing on the back that I thought if you were actually using these would be super helpful. And as we'll see towards the end of this video, um, they were probably, you know, in up to like close to like 200 degrees Fahrenheit at times and outputting just fine. So I think the fact that they survived that uh, goes to tell that I think it's a pretty well-made product. So that's about as much of a pitch as I can make there. But anyways, um, Let's get into basically how this experiment was done. So two of these panels I had, they were connected through some Victron solar charge controllers. And essentially those through their Bluetooth app, you can look at the data, like the history and the trends they call it, which kind of plots the data. Um, there are some shortcomings with this that I hopefully one day, they have some expanded capabilities. The main being that the app can plot the data for you, but you can't download it, which would have made this comparison a lot easier to just like run it all through Excel. But we'll look at some screenshots of the data later on and basically see what happened. To just spill the beans, if all you want is a number, um, putting the solar panels inside the van seemed to reduce the output by about 60%, or vice versa, you could say the panel inside the van was producing about 40% of what the panel outside was producing. So if that's all you wanted to know, that's the number. It's about 40% of the output. Um, but I think there's a few things that are interesting to note and to discuss. So if you wanna stick around, that's what we're gonna go into now. <clears throat> So if we dive a little deeper into the data, let's first look at these bar charts that come from the Bluetooth app and basically compare like the cumulative output day after day. However, as I alluded earlier, the Bluetooth app from Victron has some shortcomings to compare this data. For instance, you can't scale the Y axis. So just looking at these visually, it's not very meaningful. So I took all the numbers from these graphs that they provide and I plugged them into Excel so that we can actually compare the two numbers and actually see what's going on a little easier. As you can see, within a couple percent every single day, the inside panel produces about 40% of what the outside panel. Overall, the average was right about 38.5%. No real surprises here. Um, it's a very consistent behavior. And then if we just look at like the max output, which I think is an interesting value of like the max amount of watts both panels produced, the inside panels struggled to get over 40 watts output, 
Well, that outside panel basically every day was pushing in the mid 90s. It's pretty cool to see, you know, when a cloud comes along and shades both panels, you can just see that response kind of in unison, you know, that output for that hour drops for that time period. So I think that's pretty neat just to see that in the data. There are some things that also happened though, like on day five, it was a little windy. So if you look at the data for day five on the outside panel, it's got kind of this crown look. Um, it basically, I would look outside, I'd see like one of the flaps had folded over, reducing our output. Well, that inside panel just got that like this perfect bell curve. So uh, a little bit of wind, so a little annoying when this happens. So cool, back in business. Small advantage to the inside panel there. You don't have to deal with wind. So just a couple other small points to discuss. The first and obvious one is obviously a parking direction. Um, for this experiment, the van was parked basically due south. That's like the optimum angle for, I think, this sort of setup. Uh, if it had pointed north, it would have a very uh, unoptimal uh, angle to the sun. East or west, we get shade in the morning or the afternoon. So I think pointing it south helps that inside panel as much as possible. Of course, the outside panel, if you were going to deploy that somewhere, you could point it right at the sun if it's just for a short time, or you could point it due south if you're keeping it out there for a longer period of time. So big advantage there to the outside panel. And then you may have noticed that these solar panels were actually rated to 140 watts, but you know we're not really seeing values above 100. Off camera, I did play around with that panel, and I could get it maybe about 110, 112 watts of output. Um, but there's a few things that I, I think contribute to these panels, just not outputting what they're rated to. And I think it's just a reality with all solar panels, um, even though it might sometimes feel like misleading marketing. Um, the first one is actually temperature. I think solar panels are you know, nominally rated at 25 degrees uh, Celsius or 77 degrees Fahrenheit. So when I took an IR gun to these panels when they were outside, the outside panel was pushing 120 F, sometimes 130 F. You know which is about 50 degrees celsius so that alone you know since you're losing probably half a percent of output per degree celsius that's like over 10 percent of like the output loss right there kind of alarmingly the way i originally set this up i actually used some pillows to push the inside panel up against the window and when i went in there with an ir gun we were pushing temperatures over 180 degrees fahrenheit and it'd been running for a couple of days at this point like that so um that actually made me kind of worried. Most electronics are like, that's, that's pretty damn hot. So I actually ended up going with this like plastic bar I had along with a couple clamps to hold it up against the window. And uh, throughout the like rest of this experiment, that plastic bar actually deformed. This plastic bar I had supporting the panels uh, is actually deformed from the heat. Panels are still doing fine. I ended up using some bungee cords. They actually helped put the panel a little higher up in the window so the bottom edges weren't getting shaded. Um, and obviously you could run quite a bit of a bigger panel here in the Sprinter if this little instrument uh, thingy wasn't there. But anyways, that's what the inside of the van looks like. Uh, the double clamp system, not super conducive, uh, kind of uh, cumbersome to set up, but perhaps someday someone can make a product just like one of those nice sunshades that just has some cells in it. Um, but this is what I'm working with, uh, the original pillows. As I showed, we're just getting too hot. I was pretty impressed with these solar panels because of that fact. Uh, yeah, anyways, so temperature I think is really bad for the temperature out for, you know, is a detriment to the solar panel output. And then other things are, you know, looking at some solar calculators and the sun angle. Um, ideally, these solar panels would be at about uh, 30 degrees, 25, 30 degrees, you know, inclined to basically have a maximum solar intake during the day. And the outside panel is actually closer to about 50 degrees. Inside's panel is about 45 degrees, so I think that's reducing our efficiency as well. And then if you are ever gonna put one of these inside your windshield, having a clean windshield definitely would help. Um, I actually had a slightly dirty one when I started this. I ended up cleaning it after like a day and I didn't really notice any difference, but I'm guessing if, if I had a bunch of mud or like really a you know, bug killing Armageddon season where there was just bugs all over the windshield, it might affect that output of the inside panel. But that's basically, you know, all I kind of noticed or I thought I should share about this experiment. Uh, thanks to All Powers again for just letting me have these panels so that I could play around like this. Um, you know, I really appreciate that. And as always, thanks to everybody who watched this video and hopefully you found this interesting. Uh, if you've got one of these panels, it might help you maintain your battery level. So again, thanks for watching everybody.